Sorry. This is called, there's a fine line between endearing and pathetic. My weekend. <laughs> Friday morning, woke up and attempted to make peanut butter cookies. It was my first time, so you gotta give me credit. I had all the ingredients and followed the recipe closely. I could have used an extra egg. The whole experience was hindered by some asshole named Greg who kept walking in and out of the kitchen. We didn't say a word to one another. At one point I stuck the beater in the cookie dough and it shot up and a little blob landed on Greg's khakis. This didn't even generate a response from either of us. I just pretended I was on the bus and looked straight at the ground. Later I opened the oven and let the cookies cool and then took a bite. It was very disappointing. I could have used another egg. It was all very anticlimactic like giving birth or killing a man. Later I had my heart set on grilling so I went to the store and I spent $8.67. When I was unable to successfully light the coals, I threw one of my patented tantrums. I kicked and screamed and knocked over a lazy boy and then flung a metal chair clear across the hardwood floor. Greg came out of his room and said, is everything all right? And I just put my arm up and said, everything's cool, Greg. My girlfriend kept saying, it's too windy to grill. And I said, shut up. <laughs> those, were, those were clearly bum coals and I knew it. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was getting ready to play my first ever laptop set for a bunch of scum fucks down the block. I learned a valuable lesson that night. The word is laptop, not lab top. I also learned wireless internet is not necessarily compatible in different households. I sped down to the club. I got confused and made fun of and decided not to play. I took a look at all the empty-headed followers shuffling in and decided they didn't deserve me. I went home and ate a couple brats. Greg apparently went out and bought a new bag of match light and a bag of Tostitos. I walked up, him, up to him and said, Sorry, the thing about me is that I'm a maniac. He knew I meant it. Then I rode my bike back to the party. Highlights include eating a taffy apple with no stick. I stood in the bathroom line and declared, I have caramel in my mustache, and some girls laughed. Later that night, back at the house, my roommate's bulimic ballerina girlfriend almost overdosed on booze and pills. I was the only one rooting for her death. The next day, I just wanted to get out of there, so I rode my bike around aimlessly and ended up in the park. I was watching three people play badminton. They didn't have a net. It was two girls and a guy. They looked like sisters. One wore a dress and one wore a polo shirt and Converse. I liked her better. They took a break and bought some ice cream from the Mexican dude. I noticed the guy walking back with four ice creams. Sure enough, a few minutes later, some douche came strolling out of the bushes. He went up and greeted my fake girlfriend with a kiss. It didn't bother me that much. I was more upset when I couldn't get the coals lit. The douche didn't stay long and they went back to their game. I was staring at the grass when the cute badminton champ approached me. We looked each other up and down. It was awkward. She held up an icy green fruit bar and said, Our friend didn't want this. Do you want it? I said, Sure, thanks. This was either a subtle form of communication or I was looking homeless again. <laughs> Either way, I wish I could go back in time. When she got to the part about our friend didn't want this, I would have stopped her and said, you mean your boyfriend. <laughs> Later that night, I partied my ass off with beers and brats on a rich man's roof. Highlights include me dancing spastically with colorful wind socks, and when I jumped on the picnic table singing Stevie Wonder. There is superstition, trouble on the way. Then I jumped down and screamed, now here's the Tom Waits version, and used the same voice. <laughs> the truth is I was nothing more than a middle-aged drunk man acting rambunctious on someone else's dime. Oh, shit. By Sunday I was kind of sick of barbecue, but sure enough my girlfriend woke me up and handed me a plate containing two brats and a hamburger. I ate it in bed with my headphones on, then I ignored everyone and cast a nasty spell over the house. 
<laughs> Later, I zip my bike over to another down and dirty basement rock fest. The first band was called David Diarrhea, and they were terrific. It consisted of one chunky, retarded individual playing one note on an overly distorted guitar. Sometimes he tried to sing. It sounded like an autistic kangaroo. Good stuff. The second band was from Florida. They were typical, and if their van flipped over, nobody would care. I, rec I recommend they rename their band Florida Nerds. The third band was I Am The Liquor, and they rocked too hard at times. Afterwards, I told my friend Jesse, the drummer, you're beyond hardcore. The next band was Floral Beast from Oakland. They sounded like Bikini Kill, but worse. The last band was Brett Gand is Dead. They played what I call angular intellectual post-rock. The bass player played naked, and that seemed to impress everyone in the crowd but me. Also, they had two guitar players, which I decided I can't stand. My friend Kimberly made a brief appearance at this rockin' shindig. Every time I see her, she's with a new, tall, lanky doofus. She invited me to participate in her upcoming art show. I said, sure, no problem. She's really beautiful, inside and out. I decided touching her perfect body would only ruin everything. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>